Hi, you're listening to the Rav Dessler Giving Podcast with me, Avram Ziedman. Join us as we weave together philosophy, psychology, and Kabbalah to uncover a new depth to what it means to being a giver. Today, let's look at the difference between taking versus receiving. If I'm a giver, doesn't that necessitate that the other person becomes a taker? I mean, how is it possible for the whole world to be perfect? Surely, 50% of the world are givers. That means the other 50% are takers. How can you get the whole world working in harmony? You have to have someone who's going to take. So I think we've touched on this already before. But Rav Desto explains that there's a difference between taking and receiving. Or the Hebrew, kach, take, or mekabel, receive. The paradigm of a taker is, I take from you and you take off me. And the paradigm of a giver is, I give to you and you receive from me. What's the difference between taking and receiving? If I was to take an item, I see an item on the table right in front of me, I see a tissue, I take a tissue. In taking the tissue, that does not necessitate I have any relationship with any person. The only relationship is between me and the tissue. But if I was to receive a tissue, you can only receive a tissue if there is a person there to be able to give it. So beyond what we set up until now, there is another element when it comes to receiving. To receive means to build a relationship. There has to be another person in the picture. To take means I have no relationship with anyone else. It's just between me and the item. I remember the story by David Aaron. He says that he once went to a Kabbalist and the, this rabbi held out an apple to him and he took the apple and this was in front of the whole yeshiva and they shouted out, no, no, don't do this. It's like, what, 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 what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? He put the apple back. So he was like, uh, took it again. No, no. It's like, okay, what am I doing wrong over here? And then he held his hand out and the Kabbalist put the apple into his hand. And the Kabbalist said to him, what have you been learning? Because clearly everything up until now is wrong. Ouch! The concept of receiving means there is someone who is doing something for me. And now I have a bond between this person. Just to give another example of this, which I've heard from Rav Leuchter. He said, imagine you're in Israel and you want to get yourself a falafel. So you go to a falafel stand, and the guy says, you want a laffa, you want a pizza, I'll, I'll go for the pizza. So he cuts open the pizza, and he opens it up, he puts the falafel balls inside, he says, okay, what do you want to have inside it? Okay, I'll have some salad, okay, hummus, yes, uh, trina, you want a charif, you want a hot, okay, fine. I'll have a bit of that cabbage over there, yeah, a bit of zata, yeah, um, yeah, a bit more, you know, a bit more vanillot, yeah, um, also, yeah, some of that what do you call it, that aubergine stuff, great, okay. Anything else? Yeah, a a few chips as well, okay, and he wraps it up. Stop! What's the colour of the guy's eyes? Huh? What's the colour of the guy's eyes who just made you that pita? I don't know. Who cares? It's inconsequential. It's not about him. My eyes are only focusing on his hands, moving that pita bread from one dip to the other to the other because I'm not trying to build a relationship here. It's not about him. I just want to take it. But in the world of a giver, I don't want to take. Every opportunity to receive is an opportunity to build a relationship. I guess something for us to think about next time that anyone gives you anything, someone passes you something, don't just look at that item, look at them. Be great, be a giver. Use these opportunities to build relationships. This podcast was proudly brought to you by GIFT, where we're on a mission to inspire and enable lifelong giving. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to continue exploring the art of giving with us, please subscribe.